Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today I'll be introducing the Vivaldi web browser. You most likely use one of these, Google Chrome, Opera, Firefox, or even Safari and Microsoft Edge. But these are limited in functionality and customizability, and that's where Vivaldi comes into play. The usability on this is extremely great and it has so many great features. The reason why I chose this browser was mainly for the customizability. I encountered the Ghost Browser before Vivaldi, and I thought this was just a mess and hard to use. It was just really confusing, and it says it was for tech pros and for productivity, but I think it made it worse. Another one was a futuristic web browser concept, Opera Neon, but I thought it was a little too futuristic and uh, slow, it crashed often, and it seemed to use more processing power than Chrome itself, so I skipped that. Enough about other web browsers, let's talk about Vivaldi. So this has a lot of features. It has tab management, customization, has a beautiful user interface, navigation, keyboard, gestures, and like so many features that's too much to put in this video. So after going through the setup process, you have a bunch of settings you can configure. So first is the themes. The themes you can change the colors of your browser and whatever colors you wanted to make it. And you can also make it adapt to the, the page you're on. So for example, YouTube would be a red and Facebook, Twitter, they would be blue. So it just adapts to any, any of your web browsers. So it's really neat and uh, I think it adds to the whole experience. Next is the tab placement. You can leave it on the top, left, right, and even on the bottom. I keep it on the bottom to make it all uniform and neat on the bottom without messing up any of the other sides. And you can also do the same thing with the panel. The panel is like a little quick access area. So you can set it to mobile or desktop version of the site. And this is an easy way to access messaging programs, YouTube, uh, Instagram and it's pretty neat and handy. You can put this on the left and right side as well. And next is the address bar. This one you can go on the top and bottom and customize how everything looks like. Um, everything's really, really neat and organized and lets you configure anything you want. So there's a bunch of other settings like keyboard settings, uh, shortcuts, mouse gestures, for example. If I hold right click and then drag down, it'll create a new tab. So another thing Vivaldi is good at is private browsing. So instead of using Google as its search engine, it uses DuckDuckGo, which doesn't track anything you do. So in day, Google won't be able to steal your data and sell it or something. So for example, if I search camera, nobody would know I searched camera. Other than that, you can install a VPN through the settings. Uh, it's just like a normal private browsing, just makes it a little safer. So Vivaldi runs Chromium, which means it can run the Chrome Web Store and everything that Chrome Web Store has to offer. So all these extensions like Ad Blocker and the Grammarly, Google Translate, um, well, anything you'd use for it also works. And it also has its own screenshot feature, which saves it directly to your uh, downloads. It's pretty neat instead of having to do a um, snipping tool. And another cool feature is tab stack. So all you have to do is drag, uh, just drag one tab over the other, right click, click tile tab stack, and it gives you a split screen. So something this split screen is good at is uh, you can orient it however you want, top and bottom, left to right, and you can continuously add extra tabs to it and just, just continuously stack as many as you want. I've done up to 10 before, but I wouldn't really recommend going past that because nothing's really visible. Um, but yeah, this is a really good feature and it makes multitasking with Vivaldi just 10 times better. 
So in my script, I had this whole section about the bad parts about this browser, which was how Google apps didn't work well and how Netflix just kept crashing. But while I was making this video, I couldn't recreate any of those events, so I'm guessing it fixed it. And that's really great because I don't have to worry about these uh, features anymore. And yeah, it's to fix itself. So now I can recommend it 100%. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Um, if you want the Vivaldi web browser for yourself and just want to give it a try, I'll leave it in the link in the description below. Um, thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.